welcome to the Virginia is for Sports podcast with your hosts, Kevin Flippin as Flip, Paul Gilman as PG Fitty P, and Kenny Wingle as K Dub. Let's play VA. We're back. We're back, everybody. We're back, but we're back and we're better than ever. We're better than ever and we've changed, but we're still the same in a way. PG Fitty P, what's happening? Uh, I'm I'm good, Kevin. I'm am thrown off by the uh, the UNC Tar Heels on this Virginia uh, based podcast, but sure, let's keep that there. Wow, K Dub, yeah. is that is that, a, is that a way to start a new podcast? I don't know. My my background's fine, even though it's virtual. <laughs> I'm good with it. I think I'm represent. I'm well represented over here. <laughs> no, that's but I don't. Not- I don't know how that that stinky blue thing ended up in there we need to move your camera well so first of all welcome everybody to <laughs> the new virginia is for sports podcast um for all you seven thousand plus fans of that flipping sports podcast we're now virginia is for sports we're better we're bigger we're stronger and one of the ways that that, that makes us stronger is it's not just Virginia that there's some things in Carolina that aren't bad, but look behind me. I've got university of Richmond, VCU, UVA. Um, Paul, what do you got behind you other than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? So I've got, I'll get, this, I'll get this out of the way. I've got the New York giants cause my wife uh, loves the giants and I've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the professional level. Everything I have below the professional level is from the state of Virginia because we don't have any professional sports teams. That's that's a great point. That's a great point. And you're a UVA graduate, so that 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 helps as well. Um, I attended VCU for a little bit, and I got that hat on. <laughs> K Dub, uh, you you are it might as well because we might have we probably have some new people listening. Um, tell us about your Virginia connection. When did you get here? Uh, I got here in high school, so my last two years of high school were spent in King William County, Virginia. So I played sports there. Uh, like you, some college at VCU, right? Intramural sports. <laughs> Check the some college box. But uh, been in Richmond f- uh, for a long time since uh, early nineties. So, yes, sir. So, PG Fitty P, which all those for first time listeners, that that nickname, he's going to have to expand on that at some point. But um, tell do do me a favor. But do everybody else a favor and tell us how this podcast is going to be different and better than any podcast we've done previously, aside from your stories from the center of the universe podcast, which is amazing. So th- this is uh, version three of a sports podcast. Uh, just real quickly, you and I started one, Kevin. We brought in K-Dub. Uh, it became a different name, but it was still the same. Let's talk about whatever we, we want to talk about. And then we said, hey, you know what? There seems to be an opportunity to really focus on Virginia sports. And that's at the at the youth level. Uh, so rec all the way up, up to professional. Uh, Virginia is probably going to be uh, youth up to college until we maybe get a couple of sports teams, pro sports teams up in Northern Virginia. But we, we love every level of that. We think sports are important. We think community is important. Uh, we are all Virginians, uh, and we we feel a, a deep connection to Virginia and sports in general. And so we, we're going to fill that void that apparently the uh, newspaper here doesn't want to fill, and uh, for, with one exception, uh, TV stations don't want to fill either. So we're going to bring high school sports action back. Now, there are other podcasts that are talking about high school sports, but we are going to do it better and brighter than anybody else. That's fantastic. Your favorite word of mine. Yes, it fantastic. Is. I appreciate that. K Dub. So, it, it also, K Dub's done a lot of work um, in the last few weeks to really get us up and running. K Dub, can you tell everybody uh, some of the things that are different that we have now that you've helped create that we didn't have before? 
uh, you have a somewhat better background. <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> it's busy. It's a lot going on. No, well, hey, we've done a lot. I mean, we're going to be all over the place uh, as far as social media goes, and we're going to be welcoming, you know, the community to share uh, their videos, their interviews, their stories with us. Uh, so you can check out our website, which is uh, virginiasforsports.com. You can go there, uh, send in questions or upload links. Uh, if you go out to a game and interview somebody or just having a good time, shoot us the video. We'd love to share in your fun and, you know, cover those sports as well. VA yeah, sport. So K-Dub's not taking a lot of credit. Kevin and I actually have to stay up for the next six days straight to uh, make up for uh, everything – K Dub has done that we haven't done. The the logo's awesome. Uh, K Dub and his sister put together a really good uh, website. Uh, and the the intro, you're welcome, everybody that's listening to this on Friday. The intro is awesome. Also, also brought to you by K Dub. One quick question: Is Stu waiting in the lobby? Yeah, because I, I can't see him. him. No, nope. right. I just wanted to check. So that's a great segue. Actually, uh, one of the one of the the guys that uh, was actually on your podcast, Paul, um, a Verona legend. Um, some of the, the the listeners listened to that podcast and thought, man, this guy is awesome. Um, we had batted around, who do we want to have as our first guest? Um, and when we all, once we all learned who Stu was, I've known him for years, but once you guys heard him and K-Dub heard him, there was no question that Stuart Brown, former Verona head coach, football head coach should be our first guest and dag on it if 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 he's not right there on the screen Stu brown what is happening Welcome, hey, man. Coach What's Stu. Up, what is going on hey how are you hey all? man hey man Stu, we just got finished for about i guess eight or nine minutes talking about how this new podcast is going to go and 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 the themes and the, and the people that we're, we're going to try to talk to and dag on it probably the it's going to be hard to get a better guest than than you and I'm, i know i'm setting a bar for you right now by, by saying that but um you were such a great guest on on paul's podcast uh you've got so much knowledge and 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 virginia high school to in fact before before we even and by the way, go ahead, Kato, Paul, say hi to Stu. I don't, I don't want to just jump into a question. I'll start. Uh, Stu, thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. Your energy uh, on the other podcast was great. Uh, you've got uh, a wonderful intensity and uh, fun-loving nature about you, so we're really happy you're on. Uh, and before you see it, I'll say if you're offended by the Tar Heels thing behind Kevin. Uh, we <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. The problem with you, Paul, and y'all's uh, some of the universe stories, stories from some of the universe is uh, I need to cancel my uh, subscription to Sirius because all I do is listen to you anyway. So I love <laughs> that show, man. I absolutely love that show. Your guests are absolutely amazing. Wow, oh, that's awesome. Thanks for that, Stu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That is great. So, so Stu, what, what we want to do first and foremost on stories, you you kind of regaled us with where where you grew up. Tell us a little bit about because we've got a, a seven thousand plus listeners. At least that's the last count. Um, tell us where you grew up and and a little bit about playing high school sports where you grew up. I don't want to give away where you grew up because it's such a a, a a cool place to hear. But tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I grew up in a little town called Hurt, Virginia. It's in Pennsylvania County. It's, you know, uh, uh, it's in Southern Virginia, south of Lynchburg. People know it for Smith Mountain Lake, Leesville Lake. But, no, a little small town atmosphere. I absolutely loved it, man. You know, I think I think of my high school and growing up as, like, if you watch the movie Varsity Blues, that was us, man. We had a good time. We knew how to celebrate. And I said this, we played a different – we were taught a different brand of ball. You know, we were taught uh, – I said this uh, – you know, everything related around football. So, I, and I mentioned this, you, you know, when baseball, when you slide, you hit people with your cleats. When you tag somebody, you hit somebody. When you, somebody, met, you know, if somebody pisses you off at bat, you hit them. Basketball, you set a screen, you hit them. Basketball, you box somebody out, you hit them. When you foul somebody, you hit them. <laughs> you know, naturally in football, you hit them. So, little mountain football that we enjoyed, little mountain sports. So, it was a good time growing up. 
Uh, we started we started together when we were five, and we graduated together. So, uh, you know, a little outlaw football. I mentioned this. You know, you had to wear you had to have a certain weight, and we cheated a lot. You know, to win ball games, we'd be eight years old, and my dad would go get some thirteen year old to play running back for us. So, uh, you know, it, oh. it is what it is. But good times, man. Good times growing up. We we're close knit community, and uh, uh, we we did everything together. Dude, you you guys had to live up to the name Hurt. Right, that's why you're hitting everybody. Oh yeah, show. the hurt wildcats, the hurt wildcats. So, I may mention that too. That you know, the best little league I ever played in. It was elementary school against elementary school. So, you know, it was a lot of pride in going next door and going to town over. And that's something else that you know, coaching here in Richmond. I wish everybody. I got to go back home a couple of weeks ago to uh, our, my high school's hall of fame and. The small town atmosphere of just entering somebody else's town and your signs up at it just straight up says, you know, Paul and Flip sucks. Welcome here. You know, just signs in anybody's <laughs> yard. The whole town shut down. You see on the billboard, McDonald's will open up at nine o'clock. You know, and I'm sitting there going, I got to experience that. Just rolling in and, and it was a basketball game. You roll in, the buses roll in, the one bus rolls in, there's a you know, 400 cars behind it. Just amazing atmosphere, town versus town. And uh, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. Dude, that, that is incredible. So you played, right? You're, you, I know you played all the sports. I believe you you played baseball in college. Was that here in Virginia or did you go somewhere else? No, play I played uh, baseball at Concord University in uh, southern West Virginia. So a little D2 school in the, what was then was the WBIC, West Virginia Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. So um, good brand of baseball, good brand of sports. You know, actually Shepherd College from that conference won the national championship in football last year. So uh, nice. here's a little tidbit for you, and I'm going to put it out there. Davon Morgan, <laughs> who is a 2007 football alum of, of Verona High School, went on to play for Virginia Tech, got – Drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles, he just today at noon got named the head coach of Bluefield State University, which is also in that. Uh, so that was quite a big deal. Coach Foster and wow. Coach Beamer went and supported him when they named him. So looking forward to that. So, you know, he's going to be getting these athletes from his 804. So looking forward to that. Man, that's awesome. Congratulations to him. And it sounds like uh, we can line him up to, to get on Virginia's for sports at some point. Oh, so, yeah, uh, line him up. <laughs> be a good recruiting tool. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, so you you went on to play baseball, but then then tell us about how you got into coaching because um, you had a, an illustrious career coaching in Virginia high school athletics. How, how did you get into that, and, and and what what kept you there? Well, I was graduating from college, and you know, actually there was like a search committee up here. One was a place called Atley High School. <laughs> and one was called Verona High School. And my high school basketball coach come up here to get a job. And both places told him that uh, he could bring one person with him. And he brought that, you know, he brought me with him, which it was interesting. I was going to be a basketball coach. And I always thought I was going to be a basketball coach. But we first was going to Atlee. And if you know Coach Richardson, if you know my hometown, you know, you got to have some athletes. So uh, he told Atlee that uh, – you know, the system that he chooses to run, the clientele is not going to fit his system. A full court <laughs> press, man to man, in your face, running gun. So uh, that's how we ended up at Verona. And, you know, it all, I thought I was going to be a football, I thought I was going to be a basketball coach. And I knocked on Ed Bullheller's door. He was the head football coach. And, uh, you know, he they told me to go meet him. He was like, I heard you a quarterback. And I was like, yes, sir. And he was like, uh, well, if I I need you to coach here, and I had never even thought about coaching football, even though I'd studied football more than anything. And uh, he said, well, if you want a job here, back then they bush hogged Verona's football field. He gave me a leaf rake and told me to go rake the field. And I raked the field, took about five hours. To, took a long time to rake up in him. Once I finished raking it and, you know, pretty much I had hay, uh, he said, the job's yours. So it all started right there. That's awesome. So. PG, do you, have, do you have a question? I mean, I've got a bunch in the in the uh, chamber here, Stu, but I, this is a little repetitive because you told this on uh, stories, but it's, it's such a good story. It should be told multiple times. Uh, can you tell me about the phone call you got from Joe Paterno? Uh, well, the one, you know, I was blessed and fortunate to meet him a couple times because, you know, Mike Robb ended up signing with him. So he come down there and uh, – 
uh, got to meet him a couple times, but the biggest one was the one that was surprising. He called me one day and uh, I told this story, but we had a young man by the name of Tim Harris and he was like, coach, man, you got the best freshman that we've had in all our camps. You got a DB down there. He's long, he's fast. He can cover ground. You know, he, he, he can play the high ball. He can run with a slot, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking to myself, who is, who are you talking about? And he said, and you know, he said, Tim Harris. And I, you know, I, I said this, I, I told my, I thought to myself, who in the hell is Tim Harris? I've never heard of Tim Harris. <laughs> so I get off the phone with Coach Petrano and Coach Marcus Lewis, who's the head coach now, the other coaches, I went and I asked him, actually I went and asked Pookie Lou, who is Kevin and Jonathan Lewis, so Brian of fame. I went and asked, I said, who is Tim Lewis? They were like, that's the kid we've been telling you about. So I went in the weight room, looked at this kid. The kid was 14 years old then. He's 6'2", 180 pounds long, could fly, could cover ground, uh, could recover on that deep ball. And I just sat there and watched him in one-on-one -on -one drills. So, you know, I told myself, Joe Paterno, you know, he said, <laughs> I was thinking to myself, Joe Paterno said, you can fly out of place. So I went over and introduced myself. You know, the kid was on JV, and I told him, I was, like, I was like, look, man, you starting on varsity next year. So, um, yeah, Joe Pye had to tell me about the own athlete. That I didn't even know it was in my own field. So, um, you know, it's funny. After we told that story, Tim listened to it. He's playing for the St. Louis Manhandlers in Rocks League. So uh, he got cut by the Buffalo Bills back in, what, October or something. So he's still, he's still playing that spring ball. He's played in the NFL for five years. So he's going to be – but I told him that we recalled that story. So it was funny listening to him tell it, you know, because he was like, man, I was thinking about transfer. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that, bro. Right. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> Uh, but no, Coach Paterno, amazing man. You know, the other story I told you that uh, when he come and signed Michael and when Michael committed, he drew up that quarterback counter, which, you know, I'm sitting there going, you know, it's weird what he drew up because everybody watches Lamar Jackson run that quarterback counter on Sundays and Coach Paterno drew that play up that he ran in 1952 on his handkerchief out of the single wing. And I'm sitting there going, why in the world did I ask for that handkerchief once he drew it up? You know, I was too embarrassed, so. Down to earth man, great man. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, we talked about this earlier, I, I guess a few weeks ago, Stu. Do you think there's a gap in sports coverage in Richmond in particular? I, I don't want to. I don't want you to speak for seven five seven seven zero three five four zero. But in eight zero four, do you think we've got a gap in sports coverage? I think it's a huge gap. You know, uh, I think it's a huge gap just for the simple fact. Uh, I think I think what y'all doing is absolutely amazing. But the days of picking up the newspaper and getting information on these young athletes who are doing so much is few and far between, you know. So what y'all doing for these sports? What y'all want to accomplish at Virginia's for sports is absolutely absolutely amazing because it's so many great coaches, it's so many great athletes, it's so many great stories that need to be told. And, you know, I was coming on here today, and it's weird, I got a notification, but if you look at the top 10 Major League Baseball prospects in the state of Virginia, you know, they're sitting right here in Richmond, kid at Manchester, kid at James River. I'm sitting there going, these kids has got to make a decision at 17 years old whether or not I'm going to be a top-round draft choice I'm going to go play for the University of South Carolina, University of Georgia. It was a bunch of them. I'm sitting there going, I'm so glad that we have decided or you all have decided to use this resource to give them young men a name. So, um, and then, you know, we, we mentioned this, Kevin and I, you know, something as simple as like what the history here, but what John Marshall has accomplished in basketball. And, uh, well, you know, your, your school too, Paul, that – what a game that was that we talked about earlier, you know, so just so, so much going on. And we mentioned the legacy of not only Richmond, but Virginia sports, man, we've had a lot of pro athletes come from this state. It's rich, you know? Yeah. Last thing for me, Kevin, real quickly. I, I was talking to somebody about uh, sports in different parts of the state. And then I said, well, you know what, forget the different parts of the state. If you took the best athletes from Virginia over history, made them all magically 20, 21 years, 20 years old again, I'd put them up against any other state in the country. Name a sport. I don't care. Virginia is going to win. And if we're not going to win, we're going to be really darn competitive. Oh, we'd be so competitive in every sport. And, you know, I made that little blurb to – um, pro help promote Virginia's for sports. And yep. oh my gosh, flip the people I left off. I called so I left Rolf Sampson off my all. Uh, <laughs> I mean, how you do that? Who does that? You know, so, 
I'm sitting there going, I'm sitting there saying in the history of the state of Virginia, I wouldn't start Ralph Sampson, but who are you going to start him over down low? Alonzo Morning, David Robinson, Moses Malone. I mean, you're a little deep at that position, you know? Uh, hey, Coach, that, that was that was a smooth promo, too, and you snuck in extra players. So you could you could have as many as you want in your starting five. I hear you. I hear Just you, Just keep man. going. I tell you, with the, with the, um, with the invention of this three-point line, the way everybody can shoot it now, I don't – uh, I tell you, if you had that team of Robinson, Malone, Morning, and Ralph, you got to go down low with them boys. Oh, you know? my God. So, yeah, absolutely. Anyway, no, what y'all are doing is absolutely amazing. I think this state deserves it. Uh, you know, and that's something else. That's something else. You know, being in that recruiting game for so long, it's, you know, every college – in this in this nation, from you know, I know the Pac-12 is gone, but the Big Ten, the Big Twelve, back in the, every college in this nation knows about the 804. You know, so if you look, we've sent them everywhere. So, uh, yeah, they deserve it. We deserve it. It's, hey, it's, coach, it's, we didn't even mention it, like we could keep going down the list, but local guys, the Ben Wallace's and the Charles Oakley. You know. Oh yeah, Ben Wallace, Charles Oakley. I mean, uh, yeah, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing, and not only to do what they did, uh, to come from the Division Two level to get to that point, you know, to play on yeah. the highest level. Yeah, yeah, the 804 is absolutely stacked, and uh, I think the more you learn about it, uh, you know, I mentioned this, Michael had his banquet, but to sit down and talk to a Willie Lanier was, you know, absolutely <laughs> honor just to listen to him play for the Kansas City Chiefs against the Packers, you know, to listen to them stories alone is just, you know, you don't want to leave. You know, pull me another glass of bourbon and let me sit here all night and listen to you, Mr. Lanier. So, uh, uh, yeah, just absolutely amazing what we've accomplished here. Coach, I, I got a quick question for you. What's your go-to sporting event? Like, do you have a tradition that you go to a game or or an event that every year you're like, I have to go to that? that event my go-to sporting event oh man my go-to sporting event it definitely have to be college football you know i'm addicted to college football just for the atmosphere so uh, yeah definitely be college football i'm a huge uva cavalier fan but uh love virginia absolutely love virginia fell in love with them fell in love with them off uh a gentleman gave my dad two tickets I don't know what it was. Nineteen. Uh, you could probably answer this, Paul. When did Magic Man beat Carolina? Uh, nineteen eighty six. Was it nineteen eighty six? I thought it was, but that was my first. I, I thought it might have been earlier than that. It might. It but, might have been. Uh, he graduated in eighty seven. So okay. Could, well, that was my first. That was my first experience of a UVA football game. Watching at the time, Carolina was ranked number four. So. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was a huge Notre Dame fan before that because you wake up on Sunday mornings. I don't know if y'all remember them Sunday morning. You get to see Alan Pinkin and that crew. But uh, after that, I was sold on Virginia. And, of course, uh, Ralph Sampson and that crew sold That's me on it. So I would say college football. But as far as the bucket list, man, I want to see them all. You know, now that I'm not doing anything, I want to so bad go to the Kentucky Derby. So bad I want to go to the Masters. So bad I want to go to the Indianapolis 500. So, um anyway i want to wanna... oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> hey by the way before i uh come off that uva subject just just so you know i do have a acc champions 1995 uva towel right here um, i wonder where you got that one from huh there's a connection hold on yeah you gave this jersey to someone a while back okay you know who that is I know, who, I know who exactly who it is. I know where you got that towel from too. You know, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's the good thing honor. about yeah, the good <laughs> thing about that, I was at that game too. So uh, I was hanging on the goalpost. You know, Blanda actually threw me up there, trying to tear <laughs> that thing down. So he won't go nowhere. But AP Anthony Poindexter, what a what a play that was. So great guy. You know, Anthony's with the he's he's a. Uh, He's the associate head coach at Penn State right now. So nice, nice, uh, nice. Big time player. In fact, he might be, and we we grew up together. 
Uh, he might be one of my favorite all-time UVA players when it's all said and done. Yeah. The, the, so. the worst day in UVA football is when he rinsed his knee uh, in his final season. I think it was his I final know. game. I know. I tell, I tell you know, all the kids right now uh, bust Sean Taylor's heart, but, you know, I'm a huge Troy Mala uh, Troy Palomala, and then you got Ed Reed. But I tell everybody, man, AP was before them, man. That guy was, uh, you know, he was 190 pounds of playing safety. But they, if y'all remember, they used to put him in box at linebacker, and he was unreal. Three time All American before he blew his knee out. Chose to stay in school because he promised his mama he'd get a college degree. You know, so uh, that says something about him, too. But he's doing well. He's doing well. Hey, coach. Um... I'm going to need you to uh, let us know how you discovered this guy. Who's that there? Michael. Michael tell Robertson. Us how you discovered Mike Robertson. Man, let me tell you something, man. I saw Michael in eighth grade. The first time I saw Michael, uh, the first time I saw Michael in eighth grade, he was playing for John Roth Middle School. And the other parents had talked John Roth's coach into taking him out of the game because he was going to hurt somebody, man. He was going to hurt somebody. But I told y'all this story. When he come over, Coach Bull and Coach Chilcote, you know, they didn't know about starting a freshman. And, you know, uh, that's the first time I, I kind of spoke up. I was only, what, 21 years old, 20-something, 20 22 years old. But I told him, man, I was like, man, this is the best player we got. So, and I told y'all this story in pads. He looked unreal, throwing the football. We actually put him at tailback as a freshman, and he rushed for about 800 yards at a tailback, and he didn't carry it but about nine times a game. But anyway, first day of pads, first day of pads, we put him at free safety, and I'm tight end. We ran a high-low on him, put a post behind him, put a post behind him at free safety and put a dig in front of him. And uh, he would he took away the post and then come on the dig, and he knocked both our starting tight ends completely out. Completely done for weeks. We on a third string tight end because Mike Robinson's out there trying to, to prove that he belongs on Boston, but he's just out there knocking everybody out. But he was a man child, you know, and uh, he he was different. For me, he's the best football player I ever saw because, you know, I said this, I, I told y'all this. I remember one of his final games. He was nine for eleven for what nine for eleven, one hundred fifteen yards, two touchdowns, twenty six carries, two and thirty yards rushing couple of touchdowns but he had 19 tackles on defense so i always tell people that we can talk about russell wilson and we can talk about these guys but when they y'all show me that they were all stayed on that other side of the ball i talked to you about being a football player so uh the guys <laughs> the guys absolutely amazing so um i love it i love no, it we're, we're proud to call him uh virginian oh yeah i'm proud that he's right here and the great thing about him you know he just moved he moved to elko so he moved to Eastern Henrico, he bought him about 12 acres out there, and he lives out there and, you know, does a lot to support the community out there with his Excel to excellence. So he's got a lot of things in the work, uh, spring football. I know we just talked last week, you know, he does his spring football, but I think he wants to do some for the young ladies, start to talk about like a fall softball league, you know, which is interesting what he wants to do. I don't, you know, how travel softball travels everywhere, but he, what he, what we were talking about is like making a, making something, like, you know, like a, a weekly night league, have a couple facilities where the all these big time travel ball teams can play during the week and you don't have to go away on weekends. So uh, it'd be very interesting to get these college coaches down here in this area. So, And Stu, you're coaching right now, aren't you? Uh, I'm coaching my youngest daughter. Yeah, coaching my youngest daughter. So uh, I don't How's know. How's that going? Uh, you know, she, she, it's the hardest thing I've done in my life, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, so anyway, she's a fiery thing. So, you know, she, she, it's, it's intense. So, you know, I've always heard that it's hard to coach you on. It definitely is. So, you know, uh, she's changed how I coach her. I'm calm out there around her. Let her <laughs> get all fired up. So, uh, big day for her, though. Big day for her. She was named. She now I'm being a little braggy, so I'm sorry. So, she's a freshman at Glen Allen, and they told her today she's going to be starting at third base for as a freshman on the varsity. So, nice. Uh, yeah. So, yeah congrats. Congrats. Proud of her. Proud of her. Hey, look, look, hey, hey. By the time she's a junior, she may be big enough time that we'll put her on this podcast. Dude. Yeah, put her. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if y'all putting her on the podcast, that means we didn't do too well. <laughs> it means Virginia sports was a failure. <laughs> oh man! I don't yeah, think I'm just case. kidding. I'm I'm proud of him. Proud of him. Awesome. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Like, we're, we're, we're covering everything. Awesomeness on any level, man. Oh, I, hear you. Is... I hear you. All right, Stu, I'm going to, I'm going to do uh we're going to do a little rapid fire question at you. If that's okay. okay with you. And you can, uh, you know, you know, rapid fire questions work. You can give me a long answer if you want, or you can just give me a couple words up to you. Okay. All right, and I, I might I might know the answer to this first one, but it, you think you might have just said it. Uh, best player you ever coached? <laughs> best player I ever coached. Now this is going to surprise you. I tell everybody if I had a if and it's weird I say this, and he was the player of the year. But if I had my number one choice, it'd be a guy by the name of Tamonte Rogers, T. Rogers. He was like the ninth. He was the two thousand and two state player of the year, all Metro player of the year. But he come from Brown. But he was so unique, yo. He was so unique. He did nothing that you want him to do. The kid would not come to practice. He would he would refuse to run. He would refuse to practice. He him and coach got in arguments all the time. But the guy would show up on Thursday, get the game plan, and go out on Friday night and score five touchdowns. The guy never practiced and was the state player of the year. So that's what I'm saying. You know, what if what if we could get the kid to practice? Oh so man. Here's a here is a Bobby Bound story about uh uh mike robinson uh bobby bowden sitting in my office one day and he's like coach he is little i was like little he, you know he didn't offer to come down offered mike rob stood in the driver's ed parking lot he's like coach i had no idea he was that little and we're watching film before he met mike in person before he was like little and um I was like, he's the biggest kid on the team. He goes, well, he's the most dynamic player on the field. But I didn't know he was that little. Well, he was talking about teeth. He was like, he said, he reminds me. It won't work done. It was the slot that they used to have. Uh, I don't know if you remember that flip. But anyway, that's, oh, yeah. how, that's how good T was. Uh, Coach Bowden didn't even recognize. He didn't even recognize Mike on the field because what T was doing. you know. Wow. But when I say what T was doing, we suspended him. We suspended him because he wouldn't come to practice. So uh, Coach told him, he said, all you're doing, Coach Shield Coach said, all you're doing is return punts and kickoffs. So that night he ran, returned two punts for a touchdown and two kickoffs for a touchdown against Freeman. So he only touched the ball like five times. So uh, – <laughs> Anyway, but T would be my number one choice. A lot of people would be surprised at, but that's just because of his makeup. And the other thing, and I'm getting along with him. So the other thing that some key, T was Tamonte was a rough character, but I locked my keys in my car. I thought I locked my keys in my car. This tells you something about him. Within two seconds, he'd broken in my car, but I didn't. I didn't lose my keys in the car. I couldn't find him. The other two seconds, he hot wired it for me so I can go home. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it tells you something about Tamonte. You know, I love it. Sorry about getting along with it. You're looking for all kinds of skill sets, coach. Oh yeah, that kid. That kid broke in my car and hot wired it, and I never found my keys. But at least. And we're talking about practice. Speaking of VA sports, we're talking about practice. Yeah, Yeah, that was T. Now I'm not practicing, and he'd tell him I'm not practicing. All right, coach. Give us, and you can leave names out if you want. Your best parent story. My best parent story. Yeah. Of of me being a parent? Of no, my own of children? parents you had to deal with. Uh, my best. My I know you best, had to deal with some. My best parent story. Yeah, yeah. Leave the names out. So. <laughs> Careful, coach. Oh, man, that's it. You know, I, that's, I, I, you know, that could go. My best parent story could go anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's so, you know, I, it's unrealistic, but uh, my best parent story is just, you know, having a sit down with a parent that's unrealistic about the, the son, you know, and not only, you know, it, 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 this is not, but, you know, unrealistic expectations of what the sons are, you know, and not only, you know, you go from, it goes from, it goes from hoping they make the team. So at first you wondering, hoping they make the teams, and then you, then they worried about why they're not starting. You got to be realistic with them and pretty much tell them that that son has little, no athletic ability. And, you know, the only reason why they own there is to make sure that people get water bottles and hold dummies and <laughs> do things like that. So, uh, you know, those are always different com- uh, conversations, but uh, I can't think of one offhand. So no, no, that's- I've, I've always been blessed. I've always been blessed to have the most, the horror stories of parents, I'll be honest with you, as far as meeting meetings, I've only had two meetings with parents where I've had to sit down in front of an administrator because of playing time. So I really don't have any parent horror parent stories. So, you know, if I had any, it would be my own dad. So, 
the things that he used to do. So I love it. All right. So give us your best individual performance as an athlete. The Stu Brown one the, the one game that you were dominant you dominated. Ooh, uh, in the zone, uh, it, coach. I'm gonna give you two. I give well one was a I was quarterback in high school. I had a five touchdown performance against Liberty of Bedford. So uh four on record. Actually got your football right here, Flip. <laughs> there it is. But, uh, nice. uh, <laughs> four on record had a five touch. The fifth one was called back, but the fifth one was the best because they pushed me out the pocket and I was waving him deep and I hit him on the run. But I had an opportunity, and he's actually uh, the attorney general of New Kent Co- County, Tom Payne. So if he hears this, Tom, I hope you listen to this. He was an umpire. I was three for three with three home runs and had a chance to hit a fourth home run. And uh, this guy, <laughs> this guy was going to make sure I didn't do it. So he is now the attorney general of New Kent County. And uh, he made sure I didn't. He says that I was taking everything too close, but they won't nowhere near the plate. They had the first three pitches, he rang me out. So he was not going to let me hit a full home run game. So Wow. So uh, I'd say a three home run baseball game and a four touchdown pass football game. So, that's that's impressive. That is uh, <laughs> that's awesome. All yeah. right. Who's the best player you ever coached against? The best player that I ever coached against, bar none, is Armand Brooks. Armand Brooks, a C.D. Heldon of UVA fame, went on to San Francisco. Uh, yeah, bar none. He's the only, uh, you know, we were up 27-7 to seven on them at halftime. They come back and beat us 28-27. to 27. Mm. But cool. – uh, I've never seen anything that big, that fast. And I think it's the way he sounded. He ran past me on the sideline. He returned the putt. But, you know, he was the way he was breathing. He sounded like a horse. But the best that I ever coached against was Ahmad Brooks. You know, witnessing is a, you know, I'm big Allen Averson. So he's the best I ever witnessed. It's between him and Ronald Carey. But mm. it, no brainer that it was Ahmad Brooks. Okay. All right, one more. Um who gave you the best piece of advice that you've ever received? The best piece of advice I've ever received would have to be, uh, uh, gotta be coach Richardson, you know, coach Stu Richardson, who's my mentor. He gave me so much advice, you know, his big thing in coaching was just be good people. But, you know, he, he gave things, he let it be known that, uh, you know, there's no one player that you can win without stick to your morals and values. And, you know, the biggest thing that he taught me that every, and this goes on in life. I, I preach it all the time, but no decision is based on an individual. Every decision is based on the team. But he had a bunch of little sayings, man, that brought it out of us that I believe in. And the other one that I'm giving you more, the other one that stood the test of time with me and I teach this and everybody, it takes zero athletic ability to play hard. And I'm a firm believer in that. And I think, I think that's, I think you, the, the big term there is the culture, but Every program that I've ever been a part of, that's that's what we, I wanted us to be known for, is just how hard do we play? Because it don't take any athletic ability to do it. So, uh, I like it. I like it. Good stuff. All right, guys. So usually we would say, Stu, thanks for coming. You've been an awesome guest. You're the first guest. You're exactly who we wanted. But we do a segment um, that we're bringing over from our previous podcast called Mount Rushmore. And – we want you to be a part of that tonight. Now, originally we were going to make it easy on you and do the Mount Rushmore of basketball players from Virginia that you, that you already did on your video. Um, But we decided to go a different direction being that you're a football coach at heart, probably a basketball player at heart, but a football coach at heart. Uh, We're going to do the Mount Rushmore, the best quarterbacks to not only come out of the state of Virginia, but maybe play in Virginia. So if there was a quarterback, and, and Paul, k you know, keep me honest here. If there's a guy that came from Florida and played, let's say Al Lester came from Georgia, played at VMI, we're counting him as a Virginia quarterback. Yeah. So Yeah, thanks for spoiling my first one. Appreciate it. Wow. Man. All right, cool. I like That's that. Perfect. So we'll go around the room. Uh, what we usually usually do, Stu, is we'll just go around the room. Paul, unless you think it's better to do four at a time, it's up to, to you guys. No, round Robin's fine. Can you take the Tar Heels thing down? <laughs> <laughs> it ain't happening, dude. It ain't happening. I, I could – no, I can't do it. Um, That's for Ronald Curry. Do, nice. do you want to get – 
Yeah. I, I, think, we, I think K-Dub just went. K-Dub, you're, you started us off with Ronald Curry? Go for it. Is that one of yours? The it's spoiler definitely yours? Mine. He, he, I, yeah. Look, Ronald Curry I, was the number one player in the entire country in football and basketball. Yeah. If he's yeah. not on the Mount Rushmore quarterbacks from, from Virginia, I don't know who is. And if I'm not mistaken, the majority of the records is still at the top of the VHSA or Ronald Curry holds. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely amazing. I, I think we have all had an opportunity to see him play Patrick Henry the year they come down here. I mean, the guy put a show on. So, in a mud bowl. Too. In a mud bowl. In a mud bowl. So, we're going to go ahead and say Ronald Curry's on everybody's list. Ronald Curry's on everybody's list. Yes. All right, Coach, you, you start us off in the second round. Me? I mean, he's a hero of mine, you know. Uh, we mentioned this. I'm in NBA folklore. I am. I'm, I don't have a team. I, of course, I was a huge bull, but I was Bird, Jordan, Bubba Chuck, and now Steph Curry. So I got to go Allen Iverson. So uh, I got to go Allen Iverson, yeah. another two sport athlete. I often wonder. I often wonder if he would have given football a chance, just how far he'd have went, because he's spectacular. And he won that state championship with Bethel High School, which y'all got to meet um, Chris Gaskell, who was the center. So. Uh, yeah, I'm a huge Bubba Chuck. Love him, love him, absolutely love everything he's about. Even though he doesn't go to practice. I'm Even kidding. though he doesn't go to practice. You know, practice is overrated. <laughs> I got him practice. You know. PG, what do you got second? Uh, I, I'm going to go with – look, I'm going to leave the 804. I, actually, none of my guys are from the 804. Two of them are from 757, and so I'll, I'll name the other one, Aaron Brooks. Huge. huge. He played for a long time uh, with the Saints. Might have played with another team or two, but he was tall, had a really strong arm. He was confident, smart guy in the pocket. Yeah, Aaron Brooks is definitely in my – and he's a UVA guy. Mm -hmm. All right, well, since you threw out Aaron Brooks as a UVA guy, I'm going to go the opposite of you and go with a Virginia Tech guy, probably the, the most dynamic quarterback I've seen um, in person or on TV is Michael Vick. And I don't my know how – that he yeah. probably on everybody's list, I would imagine. How's he the fourth one mentioned? <laughs> you know, the guy changed the NFL, the face of the NFL. The NFL has played the way he played it. So, absolutely, you, know, you can almost say the guy was a game changer. He was. He changed the game, I think, or at least he took what a few were trying to do and, and just expanded on it because he had so he was so fast but so smart the way he ran the ball when he did run it. it he was awesome. And what a rifle of, a, of an arm. But anyway. Hey, Stu, as, as our guest, I'll, I'll just explain why I don't have Michael Vick on. Uh, he went to Virginia Tech. Okay. okay. I well, I, I, with that being said, I agree with you. <laughs> My wife's staring at me. She's a hokey. That's terrible, Paul. Especially mm. you asking me to take the Carolina thing down and you make that comment. All right, Kato, what you got? Well, let's stick to two sports stars. I mean, he's not uh, super popular right now, but he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Benedictine uh, High School, I believe. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Oh, Wilson. He went to Collegiate. Collegiate. Yeah. Yes. Collegiate. Sorry, Russell. yeah. Big news on yeah. him today. Yeah. Yeah. Free money. So yeah. we'll, come we'll hang quit. out in Richmond, Russ. We'll put you on. Go around the horn real quick. Where's Russ going to end up? And this is on tape, so you might be right, you might be wrong. So Coach, where do you think he ends up? Man, I hope Pittsburgh. I'm a Steeler. You know, the bottom line is the guy did throw 27 touchdowns this year. We hadn't thrown 27 touchdowns in the last three years. So, uh, <laughs> I think he knows the mistakes he made in Denver, you know. So, uh, I hope he ends up in Pittsburgh. Paul, who do you think? I mean, thinking about it on the spot, I mean, Pittsburgh's a, a place. Uh, I wouldn't shock me if he went to Carolina. Uh, and I know they have their number one overall guy that, that's going to be in his second year, but he needs more time. So Carolina's my answer. K-Dub, is he coming to the Lions? No, hell no. Uh, <laughs> Atlanta. Atlanta. Him and his yeah, wife fit in well down there. The only other one would be Washington. No. Yeah. Well, I got one more. How about Vegas? Ah. Oh. His wife, his wife can perform in one of the, ho the big hotels out there while Russ is playing football on Sundays. Come on, that's now. five. That's five good teams that need him. 
that could use yeah, them. Absolutely. And I'm a Chargers fan, so I don't want Vegas. Well, maybe I do want Vegas to get them. Who knows? We'll go, we'll jump off that bridge some other day. All right, who we got? We we already gone around twice. Uh Paul, you want to start round three? Yeah, another UVA great uh quarterback at UVA in the late 80s, early 90s, the only quarterback to ever take them to number one in the country. And then, of course, they went, I think, one and four after they started seven and out of that season. But uh, Sean Moore. Yeah. Martinsville's finest. Sean Martinsville's finest. Amen. Martinsville Bulldogs. Yes, sir. That's a great one. I'd, I'd like to say he's on my list, too. All right, Kate, what do you got sec on your third? Your third one. Oh, I think – well, I had Michael Vick was my third, so. Oh, okay. All right. Coach, who's your third? Man, I'm going to be biased, y'all, and I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Michael Robinson just for the simple fact. Think about what Michael Robinson what he accomplished. He was the of course he was third in Ballantin for the Heisman, but he was the Big 10 player of the year at quarterback. And th I think about all these – think about – and, of course, he ain't no Peyton Manning or John Will Elway or nothing like that, but he transitioned to fullback. What's that – you know, think about <laughs> that mentality to go from being a quarterback, third in the Heisman balloting, Big Ten player of the year, consensus All-American, and when you get to the pros, they make you a fullback. That just tells you he was different. Crazy. They're crazy. Yeah, crazy. And to have a nine-year career, so – that's a little bass, but I love it. Thing. I love it. Not a great answer. Absolutely a great answer. All right, who who's next? Are we are we did we just do round three already? Because Sean Moore was my third, so I think we finished round three. All right, round four, the last one. Um, K Dub, you want to start? Sure. It's a, it's a buddy of mine. He had I, at the time when he retired, he held the uh, state record for passing yards. He, uh, class of 04 Hopewell, Lee Bujakowski. That's a great one. That's a good one. That is Lee, a really good one. Lee Bujakowski was legit. Yeah. What was he, Hopewell? Is that what you said? Yeah, Hopewell. Another two yeah. sports star. Shout out to Lee. Went to JMU, yeah. too. Ball. I like it. I like it. Coach, who's your fourth? My fourth. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. The kid that went to Penn State is it Spate? The collegiate kid went to Penn State, graduated a couple years ago. What was his name? I didn't give him a name. I don't even know who it is. <laughs> That's all right, Coach. Well, we, we've said we've said a lot of names, Coach. Right? Yeah, we're, we've, we're down to he like just twelve. Graduated really, like three years ago from Penn State. Wait, wait, hey, Stu, we're having a moment like you had with uh, Paterno and your freshman uh, hair. <laughs> like, I know. And, 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 hey, and we're, the, we're a Virginia sports cast, and you think we would be able to come up with that name like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking A. Mar Anthony Martinez or something for Patrick Henry, but then I was thinking this kid. But uh, yeah, that's great. That's great that I forgot the kid's name. <laughs> you know. Anthony Martinez. That's a great answer, too, by the way. Another two sport athlete. Was it Jackson Smolik? No. I'm trying to find your guy. Well, we'll, we'll, our crack research staff will have to do it after the recording, Kevin. Yeah, we don't do a lot of uh, research on this podcast, by the way. All right, so I'll do my fourth, and it's it's a personal favorite. It's, it's not somebody who I would probably say is one of the top four quarterbacks ever. Um, but Greg Groom, when I was young, um, that – that and I don't know if you all remember him or not, but I, I, he was Marshall Walker, I think, at the time. It was – it was the time when they were combining schools. Um, what a, it got a rifle of an arm. Um, he went on to play. I think he might have played a different position at the University of Richmond. I think he might have started at quarterback and ended up somewhere else. But uh, he made an impression on me um, when I was a, a younger guy. And uh, I'll never forget his name, Greg Groom. That's Greg my fourth. Greg Groom. That's Tracy McSorley. That's yeah, him. Yeah. There you go. Tracy McSorley. How do we forget that? I know. That guy, he put up big-time numbers. Hey, hey, Kevin, do you have a nagging feeling that you haven't asked me for my fourth? No, you're next. I had that feeling. Yeah, that was smooth, Kevin. <laughs> uh, I, coach, mean, it's not like I was wrapping it up or nothing, Paul. Coach uh, <laughs> already mentioned his name. Uh, Don Mikowski 
Oh, he's, dude. He's, he's not not born here. He's he didn't play in high school. I think he was on the post grad team for Fork Union. Uh, but anyway, he ended up going to UVA and. His freshman year to his senior year, they went from the worst in the ACC to really competitive at the top of the conference. I, I give him a lot of credit for being part of the uh, UVA turnaround. And, of course, they, they've gotten bad again here recently. But You know, he he did his thing at Green Bay, too. Wasn't oh, he the quarterback for far? Oh, yeah. 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 Magic. Oh, yeah. Man. He was really good in, in, in Green Bay for a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I love it. That's great. Mount Rushmore, episode one. That was good, good stuff. Thanks, Coach. Um, oh, welcome. That. Hey, Coach, before we let you go, and once again, we appreciate you taking all this time with us, um, especially on a Tuesday night. If you – in fact, let's go around the horn one more time. The NCAA tournament's about to start. Um, it's March, March Madness. I know all of us are college basketball fans. If you had to put – I don't know – a significant amount of money, and not that we we promote betting on Virginia's for sports, um, but if you had to put a specific amount of fake money on one team to win the national championship this year, who would it be? And K Dub, I'll start with you. And I know you're a Detroit guy, but I don't think there's anybody in the state of Michigan that that's going to jump out at you. Not this year, at least. We're calling March Madness winner right now. Absolutely. Uh. Subject to change. Now, when we get closer, you know, because we have a Stomp the Lunatic episode coming up, but I just, we have Coach Brown on here. I just want to, I kind of wanted to hear what he had to say, but I wanted to throw y'all in there and let you pick one too. UConn looks tough right now. I don't know. Yeah. But the Big 12's got a bunch of teams that play tough and they're not going to be seated as high as they probably should be. It's going to be competitive, but if I had to pick a team now, uh, UConn. I have to think about it a little bit more, though. PG? Look, I've been giving you a lot of grief about UNC. I don't think it's going to be one of the teams that has three losses. Uh, it rarely is that team. So, Houston, UConn, and uh, I'm looking at my notes here, Purdue. I don't think it's going to be one of those three. I think it's going to be a team like UNC. Best guard in the country in Davis and Baycott's uh, been awesome. Now in his fifth playing season, but so when when people talk about his records at UNC, he played one more year than all those other guys did. But uh, yeah. they're a good team, and they've got some nice role players too. Yeah, coach, ma'am, here's my thing. This weekend was the first time that I saw Houston play on defense. You think they playing with six people? They so suffocating. So, and I will tell you another first of my of mine this weekend. I watched the Iowa. Ohio State, first time I've sat down and watched Caitlin Clark, and I'm embarrassed to say it. She is a high – she's must-watch TV, dude. I mean, must-watch TV. But I'm going to go with Houston to answer your question because they were playing defense with seven people. You can't – I mean, I'm. it's like Little League. They couldn't even get the ball across the court. <laughs> All right, well, uh, before I answer with my with – my, with, before I give my answer, I'm glad you mentioned Caitlin Clark. Must see TV is right. The women's tournament's coming up. Obviously, it, it mirrors the, the men's tournament. I can't wait to watch it again because of her. I mean, I like on in here. I like that. You can't even see me anymore. Um, but she is incredible. Uh, incredible. Some people call her the Steph Curry of women's basketball, and, and she yeah. pulls up places that Steph Curry pulls up from. Yeah, and I don't mean. I hope it's <laughs> sexist. I, I've never seen a amount of little young men, boys. Who wore Caitlin Clark jerseys? That blew my mind to how many boys are buying her jersey. You know, she's overshadowed everything. You know, she, you know that's the thing. I could name. I, I Caitlin Clark's name's bigger than anybody's name on the boys' side right now. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It, she really is. Yeah. So if I had to give an answer, obviously my heart says Carolina. I like Paul's answer, um, but I, I I said this at the beginning of the season, or actually I said it at the end of last season. Paul's UVA and I guess coach your UVA Cavaliers, the first team to be the, the the one seed losing to a 16 several years ago, and they came back the next year and won it. Last year, the second is second time it happened. Purdue one seed lost to a 16. I, I think Purdue might come back and win it. Ah, uh, uh, overrated. Uh, hey, whoever wins the A10 tournament, VCU or Richmond, I want one of them to win. So 
that that's my early pick. I'm changing from UConn. I'm going straight Richmond or VCU. Hey, hey guys, you notice that Kada bristled when someone picked another Big Ten team. <laughs> he started yelling overrated. I love it. I love it. They'll hey, find it. They'll find a way to lose to a, a 15 seed this year. <laughs> Hey Kevin, are you wrapping up now? Yes. We'll can, we do one, can we do one last thing? Yeah. Put it out into the atmosphere who who we want to be on this podcast at some point. Like who does like, coach you, want on the podcast? Coach. Well, it, it, the question's for all four of us. So I think we should end with coach. If we could get anybody connected to Virginia sports, whatever the connection is, who would we like to see get on? And I'll start. Ralph Sampson's been a hero of mine since I was like nine years old. I want Ralph Sampson. Uh I, I just go. saw his promo video for the Henrico Center for the A10 tournament, women's tournament. Uh, I was at Top Golf tonight, and the UMass women's basketball team was playing right next to me, but they're playing over there at the Henrico Center. Tournament starts tomorrow, which uh, I'm definitely planning on getting out there. I haven't visited there yet, but heard great things. Heard a bunch of people that have had jiu-jitsu tournaments or volleyball tournaments. They're doing a lot of good stuff uh, out there. Coach, you been out there yet? Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely yeah. amazing facility. What a cool yes. spot. All right, Stu, who, who you got for uh, – put it into the atmosphere. I mean, I, I would say Michael Allen Avison or, or Michael Vick. But, Coach, I'm going with the second best UVA basketball player of all time who is at the top of the game – Miss Dawn Staley, Coach Dawn. Staley. Hey, I love great it. Call. <laughs> yeah, I bring her yeah. home, man. Baller. Come home, you know, bring her That'd home. That would be incredible. Um, right. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Charles Oakley. Um, mm. I, I just would, I feel like we would have, and and obviously, if he's in a good mood, we could probably hear some unbelievable stories from that guy. Mm. Um, playing alongside Jordan, playing against him playing for the Knicks all those years, the stuff that's happened the last five years, it would be pretty cool. Yeah, right, that'd be awesome. k bring us home. Who's your answer? You know, I didn't pay a lot of attention to, uh, as a growing up in Michigan and then move it down here, I didn't pay a lot of attention to UVA basketball that much um, until – the Dawn Staley era and also on the men's side, Harold Dean is somebody who I thought was a baller. And uh, so I like to chat with Harold. That'd be awesome. I love cool. it. Cool. Well, Coach, thank you. you. We can't thank you enough uh, for doing this, being on the inaugural episode of Virginia's for Sports. Um, I know you've got quite the following. Uh, people have reached, reached out just after seeing your promo video. Um, how much they loved it, and uh, we love yeah, having you on. We love to have you on again. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Best of luck to y'all. I hope I can join y'all again, and I wish I appreciate everything y'all doing because what y'all doing is needed, and I think it's going to be welcomed. Thanks, coach. Awesome. Thanks, coach. Thanks, coach. Appreciate y'all. Nice meeting you. Hey, Virginia sports lovers, we appreciate your support, and we thank you for listening. If you got any questions, suggestions, or a cool story, feel free to send us an email at info at virginiasforsports.com or hit us up on social media. Find us at YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, VA is for sports. We appreciate the love.